Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about compile time programming with ConstExpert. So we often care about the runtime performance of our programs. And one of the tools that we have in our toolbox to improve this performance is by moving computations at runtime over to compile time. So the intuition here is that we often compile a program once and run it many times. So we'd rather pay a one-time cost of doing those computations at compile time rather than every single time you run an application. Now, one of the ways we have to accomplish this um, in C++ is with this const expert specifier. So if we go ahead and take a look at the CPP reference page for const expert, um, we can see that this const expert specifier declares that it is possible to evaluate the value of the function or variable at compile time. So we're doing this trade-off here where we're moving overheads from runtime over to compile time. So let's go ahead and take a look at a simple example of where we can use, say, const expert in our programs. So let's go ahead and open up you know, some new file here called const expert.cpp. And inside of here, we'll start by including IO streams so we can do some printing. And then of course, we're still going to need a main function here. So let's say we want to implement some function that calculates the factorial of some integer n, right? So this is going to do the product of all the positive integers from n all the way down to one. So for example, the factorial of five would be five times four times three times two times one. So let's go ahead and write a simple function to calculate that. We can solve this with recursion. So let's uh, create a function that returns some integer, which is our factorial. And then our factorial function will take some integer n. Then inside of this function, right, we'll have our base case where we check to see if n is less than or equal to 1. If that's the case, we'll go ahead and just return 1. Otherwise, we'll do an else case here. We'll return n times factorial of n minus 1 here. So that's, that's how we can implement a recursive version of factorial. Okay, so let's go ahead and go down to our main function and use factorial. So we'll create some integer result, which is equal to factorial of say five here. So we should get the result of five times four times three times two times one, which is 120. And we can go ahead and print that out to the screen using std c out. So we'll just print out result followed by a new line character. So this is all kind of standard C++ that we've seen before, just functions, variables, and then printing using c out. So let's use this as our baseline. So we'll save this and go ahead and compile this const expert.cpp and call our output executable, just something like const expert. And we can run this. And we see we get the correct result here. So we get 120 for the factorial of five. Now, because we're moving computations from uh, uh, runtime over to compile time, these really aren't things that we can see from a very high level, except through measuring time or by looking at our underlying assembly. So, you know, what we're changing is what we're doing at runtime, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the assembly of our program to see what our program is actually uh, doing underneath the hood. So one way that we can do that is through a tool like ob object dump or obj dump, right? To dump the assembly for um, this executable. So we can do obj dump dash DC to disassemble our program and demangle the names. Um, and we'll pass it this const expert. So you can see we get a whole bunch of you know instructions here that are the low level instructions that our processor is executing. But if we go ahead and zo uh, scroll up a little bit, we see something that looks like our main function here. And inside of this main function, you can see that we have a call to our factorial function, right? Our factorial function that takes an integer. So every time we run this program, we end up calling this factorial function. And you can even see our call to say the std o stream operator less than less than, right? So this is our std c out where we're printing some integer here. Okay, so that's what we're doing at runtime in this kind of baseline case. Now let's say we want to move this computation from runtime over to compile time. So I don't wanna see a call to say factorial at runtime. I just wanna have the result. So let's go ahead and go back into our program here, our, our source file. Instead of just having this, uh, this normal function here, we'll mark it as a const expert function. So it'll be this const s expert int factorial that takes some integer. And again, right, this is just marking that um, it's possible to evaluate the value of some function or variable at compile time. So we're telling our compiler, you can evaluate, say, the result of this function at compile time. And we'll also go down to our main function here, and we'll make this result 
a const expr uh, result as well, right? So we're saying that, or we're telling our compiler, you're allowed to, um, or you can evaluate the result, right? Or whatever this value should be at compile time. So you can use this const expr function to set some result here, instead of having to wait for runtime to call say factorial. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and see how our output you know, changes when making this, uh, when, when we're using const expr like this. So we'll save this and we'll go ahead and recompile const expr.cpp. And you can see that when we run our code, we get the exact same results. So whether it's const expr or not, right, our function is still doing the right thing, right? We're getting the result of 120. But let's see what happens when we look at our underlying assembly now. So we'll use this object dump again to look at our assembly and we'll scroll on up and see our main function here. But we see something a bit different this time. We no longer have a call to this uh, factorial function anymore. In fact, we just see some moves of this value, you know, hexadecimal 78 here. So if I go ahead and right click on this, you can see that this result, this hex 78 is equal to 120. So at compile time, we generated the right answer and we just have the answer inside of our code here that we're working with that we end up printing out. We don't have to call factorial at runtime to calculate this factorial, right? It's already happening at compile time. So for example, if we go back into this program and we change say factorial four to be something like factorial three, so that'll be three times two times one, so just the value of six, and we recompile a program and we run it, we can see at runtime, we get the correct result printed out six, but at compile time, right? If we go ahead and dump this assembly again, you can see our compiler already figured out this answer. So you can see here, we now have the value of six that we're moving around, right? So this is hexadecimal six right here. So we're moving computations that normally would have happened at runtime, right? That call to factorial, and it's now happening at compile time. So we just see the results inside of our final code. Now, like I said earlier, right, this declares that it's possible to evaluate the value of some function or variable at compile time. But in the case of something like a const expert function, we can still use this function at runtime as well, right? We don't always know every single value that we're going to pass to a function at compile time. So we still wanna be able to maybe calculate factorials with runtime data. So, so let's go ahead and see an example of that. So we'll go ahead and include random here. So we'll just generate some random number at runtime. So down here inside of our main function, I'll go ahead and create some std random device to generate a random integer. So we'll just call this random device rd. And then to factorial, we'll just call rd here, right? To generate a random number. And then we'll do something like modulo six to make sure we don't you know, create too large of a number. Um, so something that would say overflow an integer. Now, the one problem that we run into doing this is that we can no longer consider this um, integer result to be a constant expression here. So you can see our compiler is already complaining at us right here. So let's go ahead and see what that error actually is when we compile this. So you can see that we have a call to a non const expert function, which is our std random device, um, you know, this call operator, right? So what we're using to generate this, uh, um, this, this random number right here, because that's not con const expert. Um, our result here can't be const expert, right? This random number can only be generated at runtime, right? Not at compile time like this. So in this case, right, our int result here, this can't be const expert anymore because we're relying on this uh, runtime random number generation. But our function here can still be marked const expert, so we can still use it in other const expert con uh, contexts, right? Where we do know, say, some you know argument ahead of time. But let's go ahead and uh, save this, and we can compile this const expert.cpp, and we can go ahead and run our code. And you can see that you know for different random numbers we generate, we can still use that const expert function and use it at runtime. So it's not just for compile time comp uh, computation; it can be used for both. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. It's an introduction to this compile time programming with const expert. So we can have these const expert variables and functions that we can define. Um, and it can be incredibly useful for moving, say, uh, runtime overheads over to compile time. Now, as always, you can find this and any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. So on the front page here, you can see the CPP from scratch repository. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.